In the land of Tamriel, there are many beasts that roam the realm. From Daedra to trolls, Slodes to dreg. But what if a man or mer was able to take the form of a beast whenever they wished? Well, such a man-beast combination does exist thanks to here-seen Daedric Lord of the Hunt who bestowed mortals with a condition called lycanthropy, which can allow these infected mortals to turn into werewolves. Now, with all these werewolves running around with the blessing or curse that is lycanthropy, this leads me to wonder, who is the greatest werewolf in the entire Elder Scrolls series? Hello, my fellow hirelings of House Telvanni. I'm Neloth, and today I want to discuss who I believe are some of the best werewolves in the land, and at the end of the video, state who I believe is the greatest werewolf in all of Tamriel. Before I begin, let me state, as always, that this is not a ranked video. So, none of the wolf men I talk about are in any specific order with the exception of the last individual I list. Second, I will not be talking about any of the Elder Scrolls protagonists from the games like Daggerfall, Morrowind, Skyrim, or ESO, because that would make this video rather lame and I don't care to have an OC dick measuring contest. Lastly, I will only be talking about werewolves. There are other were creatures in the lore, like were boars, were bears, were lions, and even possibly were sharks. However, there is little to no evidence on specific people infected with these lycanthropic strains, so only werewolves will be specifically discussed. With all that being said, let us transform ourselves into werewolves and claw our way through this video. Sinding Sinding is a Nord Wanderer that can initially be found in a jail cell in Falkreath. We can discover from Sinding that he is indeed a werewolf, but also that he had difficulties controlling when and where he would transform. Sinding somehow acquired a Daedric artifact called the Ring of Hyrcene, likely stealing it, in hopes of controlling his transformations. However, Hyrcene threw a curse on the Ring which would make him become a werewolf at the worst possible times. Sadly, one of those times ended with a little girl named Lavinia being brutally killed by Sinding in his werewolf form and so he was locked up in jail. Although, he was able to escape his cell rather easily when becoming a werewolf because there doesn't seem to be a fucking roof in his cell. Someone should fire the Falkreath Jailer right now. Anyways, Sinding is not as accomplished or powerful as some of the other werewolves I will mention, but when he is being hunted at Bloated Man's Grotto, he is able to cleave through over a dozen heavily armed hunters like they are paper, and it's just really impressive to watch. Also, while we don't know exactly how Sinding acquired the Ring of Hyrcene, judging from hints in his dialogue, he likely stole it from Hyrcene himself, which is quite impressive considering he is a goddamned god. Maybe he should have been in my Greatest Thieves video as well. Ayella the Huntress Ayella is a warrior and hunter that is a member of the famous warrior faction in Skyrim called the Companions. Ayella is also part of a sub-faction in the Companions called the Circle, which makes up the most respected and elite members, including Kodlak, Vilkis, Farkas, Skior, and obviously Ayella herself. However, the Circle harbors a very dark secret as they are all secretly werewolves. So, what makes Ayella a greater furry than the rest of the companions? Well, Kodlak wished to cure his lycanthropy and was able to do so after his death, so I would argue he doesn't count. And Vilkis and Farkas have the potential of also curing their lycanthropy, so I don't believe they qualify either. 
Aside from Ayella, Skewer is the only member of the Companions that takes pride in his lycanthropy and often goes hunting as a werewolf, but he does get himself killed by a group of werewolf hunters called the Silver Hand. Excluding the player character, Ayella is the only last remaining werewolf that is a part of the Companions that takes pride in their abilities. Additionally, Ayella will relish in hunting in both her human form and werewolf form, and appears to be quite devoted to here seeing himself. After the death of Skior, Ayella will start to track down totems of Hircine that are said to enhance the powers of the werewolf. Ayella will regularly pray at these totems to give herself these powers that she likely uses whenever she transforms. Now, personally, I think in Skyrim, Ayella is the greatest werewolf, but what about the other games like Morrowind and ESO? Tharsten Hotfang. Tharsten Hotfang is a Nord barbarian in Solstheim that is leader of the Skull tribe during the events of Morrowind. In his human form, Tharsten is already very powerful, being level 65 in the game. It isn't until the player character is wrapped up in Hircine's Blood Moon Prophecy and the hunting games do you find out that Tharsten is actually a werewolf, who is apparently so great that he was personally selected by Hircine himself to participate in his hunting games, which also included the Nerevarine, Captain Falx Carius, and a frost giant named Karstag. Tharsten appears to take great pride and joy in Hircine's hunting game, which means even though he is leader of the Skull, who believe Hircine is an enemy and a demon, similar to Hermaeus Mora, Tharsten secretly respects or even worships Hircine. Tharsten also has in his possession the Ring of Hircine, but unlike Sinding, Hircine did not throw a curse on the ring, which could mean that Tharsten earned this ring in a manner that Hircine would be approving of. What's interesting about Tharsten is that he claims to be the oldest of the Skull and that he has lived for many generations due to wearing the Ring of Hircine. So Tharsten has been a werewolf for likely over 100 years, which is very impressive. Unlike vampires, werewolves are not immortal and still age, so Tharsten's long lifespan is most likely due to wearing the ring of Hircine itself. Falchu Falchu was a general in the Elysian Order, which was a zealous army that arose 100 years after the death of Saint Elysia. Falchu was also cursed with lycanthropy, although when and how he became a werewolf is unknown. All we know is that Falchu as a werewolf was a powerful tool in the Elysian Order that was nigh invulnerable in battle, giving him the nicknames of the Challenging, the Invincible General, and the Invincible One. It seems no matter how many times he was bashed with a shield, stuck full of arrows, or cut with blades, he would never yield and wreaked absolute havoc upon his enemies. Falchu seemed to have no weakness, however he did have one, which was fire. By the hands of a nameless Breton soldier, Falchu was killed at the Battle of Glenumbra Moors as a wildfire raged around him, likely burning him alive. This wasn't the end of Falchu, however, as during the Second Era, Falchu was raised from the dead by a Reachman necromancer named Angoth the Gravesinger, who was forced into Molag Ball's service and forced to wreak havoc upon Glenumbra once again, and even took the city of Camlorn himself. However, Falchu, who was now named Falchu the Reborn, was slain once again by the Vestige, the player character in ESO, after Breton archers who were a part of the Lion Guard set fire to the building he resided in. 
Now, I'm basing this more on memory than actual research, but I remember that Falchu was actually almost impossible to kill unless you set him on fire in the game, which makes sense given the lore, but I remember fighting him for 10 minutes straight before I figured out how to kill him, which goes to show how impressive and powerful Falchu is and how stupid I am as a person. Before we get into who I believe is definitively the greatest werewolf in the Elder Scrolls series, I want to give an honorable mention to another werewolf that can be found during the events of Skyrim, and that is Majni. Majni is a Nord werewolf living in Solstheim, but Majni is not just a run-of-the-mill werewolf, but is also the alpha, or leader, of a werewolf pack called the Frost Moon Pack. Majni is very devoted to Hircine and his own lycanthropy, taking great pride in hunting for the glory of Hircine himself. What makes Majni great, however, isn't just that he is an Alpha Sigma Andrew Tate Watcher, but because he has in his possession four unique werewolf rings blessed by Hircine himself. The Ring of Bloodlust, the Ring of Instinct, the Ring of the Hunt, and the Ring of the Moon. Majni will be able to sense Hircine's favor on the player character and will part with his rings if the player is able to match his absurdly high price. And now, it is time to reveal who I believe is truly the greatest werewolf of all time. This individual is ludicrously powerful on their own as a werewolf, but also extremely powerful as an alpha or leader as well. Allow me to introduce Vicosa the Ascendant. Vicosa the Ascendant is a Khajiit, Huntress, and also a Werewolf Lord, which is a powerful kind of lycanthrope that is able to maintain their humanoid form while also having the bestial powers of a werewolf. It's kind of ironic that a cat is the greatest werewolf, in this video, but I'll explain why. You see, Vicosa was allegedly the first person to ever be turned into a werewolf by Hircine. What's interesting is that she was turned into a werewolf during the Merethic Era and was not killed until the Second Era, meaning she either possessed the Ring of Hircine as well or found some other means to extend her lifespan. What really makes Vicosa the greatest werewolf, however, is that she formed one of the largest werewolf packs in all of Tamriel called the Moon Hunter Pack. This pack is headquartered in a massive castle called Moon Hunter Keep, very original name, but the castle originally belonged to a group of werewolf hunters called the Silver Dawn, which is actually pretty badass. Because Vicosa had the largest werewolf pack in existence, many more werewolves flocked to her cause, believing that there was strength in numbers. But, Vicosa possessed an ability that was unique to her as one of the first werewolves ever. She had the ability to dominate and control the minds of other werewolves, meaning any werewolf that attempted to defy her or question her in any way had their minds dominated by Vicosa and forced to carry out her will. Now, if you think that Vicosa is already the most powerful werewolf ever, there is actually even more. You see, Vicosa forced a man named Archivist Ernard to experiment on some of her wolf pack members, and in doing so, he created a werewolf behemoth, which is a terrifying triple-sized deluxe werewolf. Not only were these werewolf behemoths larger and stronger, but they also had greater werewolf abilities as well, which made them extremely powerful and useful additions to Vicosa's pack. 
with her massive, invincible werewolf army of man-wolves, regular werewolves, and werewolf behemoths, Vicosa planned to conquer all of Tamriel. Which is nothing new for immensely powerful individuals with large armies, but I would argue that she was more than capable of accomplishing this goal, especially because anyone who wasn't eaten could be turned into werewolves that Vicosa could force to submit to her will. And Tamriel was not the only plane of existence Vicosa wished to invade. Oh no! She also had plans to invade the Hunting Grounds, which is the Daedric realm of Hircine himself. She planned to invade the realm of a fucking god. However, these plans to rule the galaxy, I mean, sorry, rule the world was cut short when a group called the Undaunted stormed Vicosa's castle and slew her and many members of her wolf pack as well. I wonder what a Tamriel ruled by Vicosa and her werewolves would look like. I also wonder how Vicosa would invade Hircine's hunting grounds. Maybe similar to Mana Marco trying to become a god by taking Molag Ball's soul. Vicosa possibly would have done the same and become the new Daedric Prince of the Hunt. And that is all I wrote! A video where I talk about and discuss some of the greatest werewolves in all of Tamriel, and then state who I believe is definitively the greatest werewolf ever. Now, this was completely based off of my opinion, so if you have an idea for who the greatest werewolf is, let me know down below. So, with all that being said, make sure to like the like button, like the subscribe button, and like the bell notification down below to be updated on future videos. And I will see you whenever the fuck I decide to upload again. House Telvani be with you. Please, O oh hero of Skyrim, I shall be ever so grateful.